It is a foregone conclusion that the pandemic has changed the way we live as global citizens. The effects of COVID-19 leaves in its wake many disrupted industries, many of which now face the next chapter of their evolution. In this latest season of The Final Pitch, we bring to the fold a new order of startups, entrepreneurs, and innovators whose mission and reason for being are closely tied to moving forward and creating value in a post-pandemic world. This is The Final Pitch, Heroes Edition. Hoping to back this season's heroes are a formidable cast of business and industry leaders. The common thread that binds them all, the ability to spot high-impact entrepreneurs and talent, and the resources to shepherd them through. These are the investor judges of the final pitch. From Hong Kong and Macau, Thailand, Indonesia, Singapore, Vietnam, Malaysia, Japan, and now the Philippines, FWD is breathing new life into the insurance industry, expanding their product offerings and focused on creating fresh customer experiences with easy-to-understand products, supported by leading digital technologies. Through this customer-led approach, FWD hopes to achieve its vision to become the leading pan-Asian insurer that changes the way people feel about insurance, especially now during this global pandemic. In joining the final pitch, FWD Insurance Philippines President and CEO Li Hao Zhuang is on the lookout for heroes to join their fold and help lead the charge towards revitalizing the Philippine economy. FWD is a pan-Asian insurer. We're very young, we started in 2013, but within a short space of time, we now operate across nine countries. Time now we have uh, over 50 billion US dollars in assets. In Philippines, we started in 2014, and now we are one of the top five insurers in the country and is one of the fastest growing. We operate nationwide with 17 branches, one of the best capitalized uh, insurers in uh, the country. Our mission in FWD really is to change the way people feel about insurance. And we do so by being different in a number of ways. We believe in marrying technology and the human touch to create the best possible customer experience. And because of that, we have been rated number one customer experience in the Philippines uh, last year by Forrester Research. The other way that we also do it is our singular obsession with customer experience through our distributors. We have built some of the most professional, productive and digitally connected advisors to serve. And the third, we differentiate ourselves by using technology to have deep customer engagement through our tap platform, uh, which is a, uh, an app that customers can readily connect with us 24 seven or through our AI enabled call centers. And we continue to do innovations that push the frontier of our business. You know, our main aim also is to be the employer of choice and we create differentiated careers for both our advisors and for our staff. In FWD, we offer four main types of products and services. Uh, we have life protection that covers your life. We have health protection that covers your critical illnesses and hospitalization. And the third, it's on investment and saving, where we help you plan for your future, uh, for your retirement, for your kids' education. And we also have a suite of digital products that make it really easy for you to purchase your policies online with minimal underwriting. It can be done in minutes. I joined FWD because I want to make a difference. I want to do more. I believe insurance can be sold in a different way, in a much simpler way. I believe the customer experience can be much better than what it is now. And I joined FWD as a head of agency at a group level, managing uh, our agency forces across the different countries. So during that role, together with the help of countries, introduce a number of different initiatives that significantly raise the productivity and produ uh, professionalism of our agency force. And because of that, the efforts were recognized. And part of that reward is 
I get to be here in Philippines uh, to run the business here. I was very privileged to be given this opportunity to work in Philippines. My mission really is to continue this growth to make sure every single Filipino is protected and it is our duty to make sure everyone is covered. Number two is to live to our promise to change the way people feel about insurance and that is using our technical uh, technology DNA which is our strength married with human touch to our customers. The pandemic brought out two very obvious realizations. Number one is the need for protection. If something happens to you, you have no backup. Governments all around the world realize that they are not in the position to take care of their citizens in this broad scale pandemic. So which means the private sector have to step in. The sectors like insurance who can spread the risk around, who can help in the process of planning and helping you know, individual Filipinos take charge of their future. You have to think of the future because the unexpected may happen to you and you need to be, uh, you need to be protected. I think one of the, that's one of the key things. FWD is always on the lookout to improve our customer experience. So any company that can help us achieve that mission we are most interested in partnering with. It can come in the number of forms, improve our product and services to our customers. You know, it can help us expand our product offering or the way we serve them, we will be most interested to talk to you. If it helps us to reach customers that we couldn't reach before, we are most interested to talk to you. Uh, with your tool, you can reach an unreachable segment of customers that we couldn't reach before or we couldn't do it commercially viably. If you can do that, we are most happy to work with you. If you have a way that allows us to hire more Filipinos to give even better career opportunities, we want to talk to you as well. We keep a really open mind because talent can come from anywhere. Opportunity can come from anywhere. And that's why I'm so excited about Final Pitch because so many people have heard about your program and they are coming in with really innovative ideas and I really can't wait to see all the fantastic ideas that are being generated and hopefully you know we will have the privilege of partnering with one or two of you. Up next the unique thing about 917 Ventures is that we're part of Globe Telecom. Globe Telecom being the largest mobile operator in the country with more than 80 million subscribers and 150,000 corporate clients. What we provide to our startups is to unlock that unfair advantage. All of these big companies during the pandemic, a lot of them folded. They had so much funds, but it's not about funds now. It's about the framework to pivot and how to use this crisis into a new opportunity. And that's what I'd like to contribute to the final pitch. Nine One Seven Ventures is one of the largest corporate venture builders, backed by the Ayala Group's Globe Telecom. Their goal: to create and expand multiple new businesses that are to become pioneering digital companies. Amidst this global pandemic, 917 Ventures is determined to build the Philippines' first unicorn company when scouting for ideas and talent through their entry to the final pitch. And the man assigned to this tall task is 917 Ventures Managing Director, Vince Yamat. 917 Ventures is the corporate venture builder of Globe Telecom. Uh, we scale, operate, and build businesses that uplift the lives of the Filipino people. The concept of a corporate incubator is basically this. What we do is we provide everything to the venture builder. Um, usually, if you're a founder, you're on your own. You raise your own capital. After raising your own capital, you hire your own people, and that usually takes a lot of time. And when you hire people, of course, you also need to incorporate your company. Um, you need a finance guy, you need a legal guy, and of course, your engineering team. In a corporate venture builder, on day one, we provide everything. 
So the unique thing about 917 Ventures is that we're part of Globe Telecom. Globe Telecom being the largest mobile operator in the country with more than 80 million subscribers and 150,000 corporate clients. What we provide to our startups is to unlock that unfair advantage. Um, look at Gcash. Gcash now has more than 30 million subscribers. They were able to reach that one by providing Gcash to all of our subscribers. Consulta MD, the, the largest telehealth company in the Philippines, is now being offered to all of our subscribers in Globe Telecom. AdSpark, our digital media agency, is one of the largest, if not the largest independent digital agency in the country. And then, of course, we have HealthNow. HealthNow is a joint venture with AC Health of Ayala Group that provides healthcare services to the Filipino people. And of course, we have another company, um, a joint venture with Pure Gold called Pure Go. Pure Go is an online grocery that provides affordable grocery items to the Filipinos. Typically, a standalone startup would have difficulty um, talking to all of these big customers. But if you're a 917 venture startup, the lineage is there, right? Um, we're in. We can easily talk to big corporates or big conglomerates um, to work with us. We started 917 Ventures in late 2019. Imagine building a company during a pandemic wherein most of our employees we haven't seen. So we literally ramp up the company wherein we're just working through Zoom and through Slack. Now, this is what we've learned. Um, for the past nine months, these companies, we provided them a culture of freedom, autonomy, and accountability. So we allowed them to validate all of our ideas from the comfort of their own homes. So just imagine that feeling when you're starting and building a business here in 917 Ventures. So before being the managing director of 917 Ventures, I was one of the entrepreneur in residence building all of these, these new companies um, within and experimenting. After that one, the managing partner of 917 Ventures, which is Isa Cabrera, was asked to go back to Globe to run the commercial um, group. And when the CEO, Ernest Koo, asked me to lead it, I openly accepted the role. The vision is fairly, fairly simple. Um, through the companies that we're building, um, the goal is to uplift the lives of uh, the Filipino people. We joined the final pitch because we believe that there are a lot of problems to be solved out there. And these problems, we believe also, are best solved by someone who's experiencing them. And I always tell this to the guys that you should be obsessed about a problem because when you're obsessed or you really love to solve that problem you make it work right just like when you love someone you make it work when you love a problem or obsess about the problem you try to solve it um, whatever it takes now in 917 ventures once we've identified that person and that problem to solve and we really like it we give all the machinery to that venture builder um, we build the company around that person to make sure that that person will be able to solve that problem. And therefore, by solving that problem, we'll be able to uplift the lives of the Filipino people. We're gonna make that person a hero and a winner. There are not a lot of entrepreneurs here in the Philippines. If you go to the States, you have an idea, you're actually encouraged to drop out of college, right? And finish it and, and make it happen. And that's what happened to all of these brilliant and fantastic entrepreneurs, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, and all of the big ones. If you're a Filipino and you are an, an employee and you want to solve big things and you have a family, most often you're not going to do it, right? Even if you want to solve a certain problem because your number one problem is how am I going to do it? How do I raise capital? Where am I going to get the people to join my company? Secondly, if you're in big corporate, I'm comfortable with what I'm doing now, right? And therefore, I don't want to give up that cushy job and be an entrepreneur. So to address that is basically what we have, our concept of a venture builder. A venture builder is, you're part of an organization called 917 Ventures. You're gonna be compensated to build and solve that problem. All of the struggles of a typical entrepreneur, we're going to solve that one. When you're part of 917 Ventures, although you're part of corporate, the success rate is a lot higher 
given the proven track record that we have. Every single portfolio company that we have are dominating their own industries. And we strongly believe that, again, the current incubators in 917 Ventures are going to be significant players in their own industries as well in the next five years. THEMS International is a pioneering and innovative school in the Philippines, offering industry-relevant and future-ready, blended and online programs. They are committed to develop a new order of business professionals, enlivened by a vibrant, entrepreneurial spirit. THEMS International co-founder and President Joel Santos has been one of the regular mentors for the final pitch in the previous seasons. He has expanded his role and will now serve as an investor judge for the Heroes edition. The story of them started in 1999. The Asian crisis just ended. I came from a successful stint as an impact investor, but the fund was sold and it was up to the next frontier. And there are many options. The Philippines was in a crisis. There's so many options outside the country, but uh, we thought that, are you going to leave your country in a crisis? So we said, so we look for, where is the gap? So we and our co-founders, we said, I think the biggest gap is education. We didn't want to be just like any other school. So we looked all over the world and we saw different concepts. And I think what we found out was that the Philippines was slow in internationalizing education. We started the country's first international college. What does an international college mean? Well, Thames International Business School allows you to graduate in any country of your choice. You can graduate in the Philippines, Singapore, Australia or the UK. So that was the difference. So that's the school we started more than 20 years ago. And then what does the country need to move forward beyond internationalization? To progress, to fight poverty, you need more entrepreneurs. And there were like short courses on entrepreneurs, but there was no entrepreneurship degree. So in 2005, more than 15 years ago, we started actually Southeast Asia's first entrepreneurship degree. Our program, you graduate with a college diploma and an existing successful business. In a way, that's our culture. Eh? We always try to stay ahead. We look at the future, we make our bets, and then we push it anyway. They said, how can a college student study at the same time and start a business? They had restaurants, they had an agribusiness, somewhere in retail and they were fresh graduates, age 21. So we tried to trailblaze, and that's a big part of our culture. And how are we able to do that? Part of the secret sauce also is that we're a small niche school. We're not big. Uh, if you want big universities, we can offer that to you when you go abroad to our partners, right? All of our partner universities are huge universities, but while you are in the Philippines, in Thames, we're a small niche school of about 200 to 300. The most that we had is about 300 to 400 students. And we like being small because that's really part of the design. The design is to be small, to be a tightly knit community where every student, every lecturer, every administrator all know each other. And that's why networking, helping each other, you know, in being successful together is a big part of the culture. Most students, by the time they graduate, particularly the NTREP students, they've already started doing business with each other. Somewhere in my journey in Thames International Business School, I felt I hit the wall. I can't contribute so much anymore. And it's because I've been in the school for around 10 years. So I said, it's time to take a break. I started an impact fund. Uh, impact firm in Singapore. Uh, I also worked for another company. I became a CEO of a multinational ingredient company. With those two fresh experiences, I came back to run the school in 2018 as president. One of the first things I did when I came back in 2018 was to start the digital transformation of Thames International Business School. That could be seen by going online. So since 2018, we are already doing online learning. 
What made us unique is that instead of learning to be an online school, we're actually the schools for schools and we're teaching other educational institutions how to go online. As much as we were ready for online learning, we were not prepared for the impact it had on people. So tech-wise, we were okay, but the impact on the students, the lecturers, the parents, the admin, we were not prepared for that. That's when I think the biggest shift happened to us, where we made our use of technology more human-centric. We changed the processes to make it more efficient for them. Everything went online fully. Now, everything, the whole school had to be virtual. Our uh, school activities were virtual. I think I'm proud to say, after one semester, we humanized technology. The pandemic taught us how to humanize technology. I love being a mentor for the final pitch because that's, that's me, right? How do I help somebody improve their business? It's not about how much fun you have. It. It's really looking at what are your resources beyond funds. And during the pandemic, I've been able to help uh, a lot of other entrepreneurs, not by giving them funds, but by giving them programs and frameworks of how to shift, how to pivot. All of these big companies during the pandemic, a lot of them folded. They had so much funds, but it's not about funds now. It's about the framework to pivot and how to use this crisis into a new opportunity. And that's what I'd like to contribute to the final pitch. I can now be a judge. I'd like to contribute beyond funds, but to give you a mindset, a process on how to pivot and move from setback to comeback. Up next. By the nature of us running a venture studio and a venture fund, we are always looking to invest in great ideas and in great talent. Final Pitch is another avenue or another opportunity for us to meet great talent, to meet entrepreneurs, to meet founders, and get exposure uh, to their ideas. UBX is the financial technology unit of the Union Bank of the Philippines, a fintech company passionate about creating opportunities and access for all by building solutions for financial institutions and MSMEs. As a venture studio and venture fund, UBX president and CEO John Yanuschak enters the final pitch to find great talent and support ventures that put a spotlight on the real heroes of this global pandemic. UBX is the FinTech Venture Studio and Fund of Union Bank of the Philippines. Union Bank of the Philippines has been on a digital transformation for about five years. At the bank, we, we looked at what, what comes next, what happens after digital transformation. Our hypothesis is that in the future, banking will be, and financial services will be invisible. They'll be embedded into the activities and the experiences that truly matter to individuals and businesses. More and more, the activities and experiences that truly matter to individuals and businesses are being enabled and facilitated by digital platforms. So at UBX, we are building and we are investing in digital platforms that serve digitally and financially underserved communities. And at the same time, we're aggregating and virtualizing financial services so that they can be embedded into the platforms of others. Prior to UBX, I had the opportunity to do business with Union Bank. I had the, the privilege and the opportunity to learn about Union Bank's own digital transformation journey. I had the opportunity to see firsthand how Union Bank was digitally transforming itself uh, in earnest with a, a sense of urgency uh, and a seriousness that, that you know, I, I didn't see in others. So that really impressed me. So when the opportunity was presented to me to come to the Union Bank family, I, I jumped at that opportunity. I started as a consultant with Union Bank. The work that I was doing was uh, working on the, the strategy 
uh, that ultimately led to the uh, spin-off of UBX in uh, December 2018, and, uh, and I was employee number one. We are effectively a collection of fintechs. Number one, we are a venture studio. So we have an innovation pipeline and we take ideas through a, a, an incubation period. We bring them to market and from there, if, if there's good product market fit, we can then grow those ventures on a growth trajectory. On top of that, we're not just a venture studio, but we're also a venture fund. So while we're investing in ideas of our own, we are also investing in the ideas of others. And so we are investing and providing capital to ideas that have been developed external to UBX. And then we become a, a shareholder and we provide not just capital, but we provide access to uh, the Union Bank ecosystem. Uh, we provide access to our own platforms and the, uh, the capabilities and the expertise that we have at UBX to these companies with the pandemic, with the COVID situation. All businesses, large and small, have had to go online. Uh, so we have created an e-commerce platform called Central that allows small and medium-sized enterprises to quickly create. You can set up an online presence. For those who already have an e-commerce presence or who are continuing to transact uh, outside of uh, e-commerce, you still need to digitally enable uh, pay, things like payments. And so we have a payments platform called Vux. It is the largest payments platform in the Philippines in terms of the diverse methods and options for payment, but also in terms of locations. We've actually aggregated the largest network of over-the-counter providers. So it's still cash, but what we've been able to do is digitize right up to the last mile because of the, the breadth of our network. Small and medium-sized enterprises have really risen to the occasion, got online quickly, uh, digitized their operations as best they could, but now they need access to working capital. And so we've created uh, CCAP, which is our digital end-to-end -end lending platform. And so it allows lenders to provide a digital end-to-end -end lending experience for SMEs. Uh, but equally as important, it allows SMEs to uh, apply, be approved, and be dispersed online, 100% online digitally, and approval is within the days. As these businesses fill a critical gap in our economy, it's more important than ever that they, than they have access to this facility. By the nature of us running a venture studio and a venture fund, we are always looking to invest in great ideas and in great talent. So like many of the things we do, Final Pitch is another avenue or another opportunity for us to meet great talent, to meet entrepreneurs, to meet founders, and get exposure uh, to their ideas. We're always looking to invest in people like that, whether it's their ideas or the, the talent or the people themselves. So I think it's heroic for the, the contestants, because uh, as I said, you know, as we move into this post-pandemic future, uh, we need new ideas. Uh, we need to accelerate things like digitization. And uh, the people who are brave enough to come out there with new ideas, you know, they are heroes because they are going to play a critical role in reinventing and revitalizing our economy. I think that being on Final Pitch is consistent with our vision, with our mission. I think it's consistent with our business model, being a venture studio and a venture fund. This is also our way, uh, you know, our, our, our duty almost to support uh, the real heroes here, which are the entrepreneurs, the founders, uh, you know, the great talent in this country that are going to rev revitalize our economy. Next time on the season premiere, we bring to you the pitches of the final pitch, Heroes Edition.